Hi guys, it's Triple C. Well, I only got it for over a week, and it already got problems. It's the E74 aired. Yeah, so I read I read around some tutorials on how to fix it and stuff like that, and then I read about the cost. Apparently, a video scaler unit chip, which is this one right here, called uh, Hana or something. Yeah, so uh, the Hana chip. Apparently, kind of disconnected from the board or something like that, and uh, they caused the error. So, I'm reading a few tutorials attempting to fix it myself, and we'll see how that turns out. Apparently, it's a very common problem for Xbox 360, <coughs> not as deadly as the Red Ring of Death. So, this is the good news. Try to fix that piece of shit. Well, the tutorial say to overheat the system so it will be reset or something. So I'm waiting for it to overheat. I killed the fan and he seems really hot. And we'll see what happens when it overheats. Fifty dollars later, I got my Xbox 360 back. Supposedly fixed. Got to hook up. Well, we're gonna find out. Whoa! That's pretty loud. Good, it's back. Okay, so um, I guess I modified the cooling as well. Put the game in. It's running a hundred percent at all times now. This is it. The red ring is really caused by heat. It was a really bad design. When it heats up, the ball bands chip loose. It caused it caused air and. Uh, well, broke. But then I do suggest any of you don't bother with the tutorial, just send it in because not all of it can be fixed. I mean, a lot of issues with red ring, it can be a loose chip, but you can be able to uh, maybe get it back by changing the uh, X clamp, uh, the cooler holder. But then, what if it's not? You just be wasting your time. Pay some money, it's not that expensive. Usually forty, fifty dollars you can get it fixed. And they get it done in under one hour. That was amazing. Guy's really nice too. Sweet. Some Frozen Motorsports, yeah. I'm on with my Pontiac. My Firebird. So my first car back in 2000 and what was it? 2003 was a 1985 Pontiac Firebird V6. 
love that car so much. Well, eventually I had to leave the country for Taiwan, so I sent the car over to my friend, and that's the end of it. But then I always have this thing with that car. Yeah, so this game it's pretty cool just because they included a third generation Pontiac Firebird. That's pretty cool. The one in the game is a 1987 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. Yeah, it's a cool car. I make it black just like mine. That's nice. So here's Frozen 3. Gameplay. adjust my camera a little better that would do all right Cool how like modern gaming that the triggers got like uh, what do you call it like a tension sensor kind of thing where you can control it in racing games especially where you can control its speed or maintain the speed whatever way you want it don't necessarily have to get a wheel and a paddle to do that which is really nice when you do a turn like this because if I press it all the way down the wheel starts spinning. There's too much horsepower. Of course, I took all the, uh, the no assistance. I took them all out just to make it a bit more realistic. So then, if I press all the way down, the wheel will spin out. Then it'll be really hard to control. Yeah. So the trigger design like that is really good for stuff like this because you can have a lower speed, lower RPM for so doing a turn. Uh, speed up that way you don't spin around it's good for simulation games like this oops one thing I noticed between Rosa 3 and 2 that this one have in-game music the last one didn't which is kind of odd. I like the gameplay on the last one a little better though. I mean, you get to choose what you want to do, kind of like in the Grand Turismo series. In this one, if you play the season mode, you kind of just play through the story. Almost like playing it through a story, because it's a, uh, it gives you just a few options on which races you want to do. And there's a calendar you get to choose between those and then um, it's nothing specific it would be like from one car to another car you could do the options related to the cars you already own and stuff like that so then you'll be driving Japanese cars for a certain type of race you'll be driving European cars for a certain type of race and chances are you'll be driving stuff you never heard of or you never liked but it's season mode but but ultimately, you have to do with a class, so you could just go and buy a car, and then you will find your races related to the cars you have, stuff like that. But then I don't like that as much as I like to, because it's actually confusing. Even the main menu is a little confusing. But otherwise, it's a lot better graphics. Um good selections of cars even RK mode versus mode you already have a very very good selection of cars between really low horsepower front wheel drive cars to super exotic cars yeah muscle cars everything already included for you to play you don't have to unlock everything so then if you buy the game and you have a friend over you can pick out again and play whatever way you want right on the spot you don't have to spend hours and hours trying to beat the game, unlock the cars, 
so then you can finally have some fun, you can have your fun right from the beginning. You know, I like Firebirds to be just Firebirds. Because I really don't like Transcends, uh, 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 spoilers. The spoiler on a Transcend is not that cool. But then that probably have a lot to do with me watching too much Knight Rider when I was younger. Just like the way it looks on the regular Firebird. Of course, a regular Firebird plus powerful engine would yeah, be a pretty cool car. Although I only had a V6, it's still fast enough. I gotta get a TV tune at some point soon. I mean, this is not satisfying. Recording on the camera, poor audio quality. Almost like a pri private group, pirate movie from the theater. Yeah. See how the wheels spin up? I had to press all the way down at that point. Which is pretty cool to make it for videos.